I believe agriculture is on the cusp of a big time game changer. And that's one of the reasons this year's Corn Soybean College, the theme is change is the name of the game. This big time game changer comes to us in the form of the Inflation Reduction Act signed into law in August of 2022. This bill puts the U.S. out in front of all other countries in its financial commitment to global warming for short windows starting from 2025 and sunsetting in 2027, the government is offering biofuel manufacturers a substantial tax credit for carbon greenhouse gas emissions. They're being asked to lower their carbon intensity of the fuel. The incentive is big enough that most, if not all, biofuel refiners, I believe, will take advantage of it. While biofuel processors will be looking for ways to sequester CO2 through things like pipelines or reuse in gas and oil extraction, things that take money and time, the easy way for biofuel refiners to lower their CI score is through corn that you sell them. Your corn makes up more than half of their carbon intensity in ethanol. With the average CI score of ethanol being around 50, the standard CI score of your corn is around 29, so it makes up more than half of their CI score. If refiners can source corn with lower CI scores, they can lower the CI in their ethanol product without adding anything to infrastructure cost. The Department of Energy through their Argonne Lab has created the CREEP model, which is a tool that calculates the carbon intensity score on your corn crop. To build this model, they have to do life cycle analysis of every product that goes into your crop, as well as the practices that you use. While the industry standard is 29, many growers are much higher than that, and some growers have lower carbon intensity scores. Buying grain from those growers with a lower score is the easiest way for refiners to lower their CI score and qualify for the tax credits. Lowering your carbon intensity score from 29 to eight or even zero, maybe even negative numbers, would create tax credits that could amount to hundreds of dollars an acre for the biofuel industry. But pending IRS approval, the bill sets the tax credit at 5.4 cents per CI point. So lowering your carbon intensity score from 29 to zero would create a tax credit worth $1.57 a bushel to the refineries. Now, how much of that will trickle down to the grower is unknown, but I do believe the tax credit is big enough that they will come looking for the corn to lower their CI score. For the first time, you can be price makers instead of takers, somewhat similar to the beef industry, where growers can sell beef based on how they grade out. Some of you guys have a CI score below 29, and with a little tweaking, we can take it even lower. At Corn College, we'll explain what makes up your CI score and what you can do to lower it. There are many things that go into this score, such as types and amounts of fertilizer applied, fungicides, insecticides, but no doubt the big three is no-till, nitrogen, and cover crops, and we'll take a look at how they affect your score. Looking at, of the big three, nitrogen is one that changing products and timing and rate and implementing the 4R while it can be a hassle, it's a fairly easy one to implement and we'll focus on how we can do that. As we convert to no-till, that's a little different story. How do we handle this residue if you're not used to managing residue? We're gonna focus on some of the tricks that can bring you into no-till in a successful way. Well, cover crops is one of the bigger movers of your CI score. Cover crops ahead of corn brings a lot of risk. We gotta be clear on those risks. So we're gonna work with you here at Corn College on how we can keep the yields close with our cover crops to take advantage of that CI score, especially if your lower score has a high enough premium to pay for any deficits that you would see in yield. But there's a lot of steps involved in getting corn that looks good and yields good in cover crop ahead of corn. And our goal is to eliminate as many train wrecks as possible. This year, at Corn College, we'll also be focusing on how to eliminate train wrecks. There's no tax subsidy that can offset this. We need to know the risk involved when moving from no-till to cover crops and back and forth. 
when growers come to us and they say, can I want to go from my conventional tillage to no-till and cover crops, we ask for a three-year time period. In that three years, we can take out existing density layers or compaction layers below ground. We can balance fertility. We can add equipment or attachments and basically educate the grower on the process. The problem here is we don't have three years. For this program, we have this fall, maybe a little bit in 2024. And I can see a big movement in ag in this direction and a lot of people not prepared for it. So the quicker we can get you prepared, the less stumbling that's gonna take place in this process. We'll focus on that here at the Corn College. What are some of the steps and tweaks that we can stop this from happening and keep your yields close to what you're accustomed to while lowering your CI score? I do believe knowing your CI score and working to lower it will be a game changer in the very near future. Will there be a program after the sunset of 2027? Who knows? This may be just a $369 billion experiment. But I do believe those farmers who have the knowledge and are in place to take advantage of it will be able to participate in what I think will be a game changer at the farm gate and the gas pump. If you want to learn more about your CI scores and how to be ready for this opportunity, sign up for Corn College.